Hello, and welcome to Mythical Spotlight, Episode 3, Nature Spirits. These are beautiful ladies of the forest who are nymphs. They are named different things by what type of tree they inhabit or protect. The Malii are in charge of ash trees. The Oreads preside over conifers. The Hamadryads are of oak and poplar, as well as others. It is said that these nymphs rely on the trees and that if the forest is thriving, so will they. And if the trees die, so do the dryads. What is truly interesting is dryads are always female, but their male counterparts are the satyrs. Just so it's said, satyrs are the creatures that look like men but have various features that are horse-like. This tree from Japan is conveniently nicknamed the vampire tree. It is said that it resembles all other trees, other than it has branches that look like it could grab you. And at the base lay the remains of multiple corpses. True to its name, the tree lives primarily off of blood. If it grabs a hold of a human being, it will jab its branches into the body and suck all of the blood out, and then drop the body at its roots. As the story goes, the tree started off as good spirits, until the land they grew on became soaked in blood, transforming them into evil, malevolent beings. This is a strange tree from Asian mythology that is said to have at one time grown in mountain valleys. What makes these trees odd is the fact that their fruit looks like human faces. It is even said that the seeds inside have human features as well. This fruit will continuously laugh until it falls from the tree. I'm not sure who would try to eat a human head shaped fruit, but it is said to have a sweet and sour taste. It should be stated that these trees are not known to attack humans. These spirits were famously shown in the anime Princess Mononoke in a form of a tiny ghost with a rattling head but this is different from the ones found in the Japanese folklore. The Kodama of lore normally live in the trees but can take on the form of spirits, lights, and beasts. There are even stories of some falling in love with a human and taking a human form to be with that person. It is said that they are capable of speech but normally don't utilize it until someone has died. The trees they live in are viewed as sacred and are commonly denoted with having a Shimanawa rope tied around the trunk. If someone was to cut the tree down, they would be cursed and it is said the tree could be seen bleeding. This being is also known as Inferi Jur and almost have a symbolic relationship with oak trees. They prefer to live in the oldest and most imposing looking oak trees as their home. Most of them are very protective of the creatures in the forest, but tend to not care much for humans. The oak men do not take destruction of their home lightly and will take revenge on anyone who is nearby. This means that that person who destroyed their home may not be targeted but it could just be the next unsuspecting passerby. They will take the form of a human trader and offer their victim a tasty looking cake, but in fact it is made of highly poisonous mushrooms. Found in Russian Slavic folklore, it is the protector of the woods known as the Lishi. His description varies by account, but all state he has long green hair and a beard. He can shapeshift into anything including human beings. It is customary to leave an offering of bread, salt, or milk for him if someone needs to take firewood from the forest. The Lishi will hibernate during the winter and wake back up in the spring. It is said that if a human irritates them, they will lead their victim deep into the woods and disappear suddenly, leaving the person lost. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.